Uh, over the past 24 hours, we've seen uh, some, some real carnage on Queensland roads. Uh, it's been a terrible 24 hours uh, for policing. Uh, we've seen three people killed, and we've also seen a number of serious traffic accidents, not the least of which occurred in the northern suburbs of Brisbane um, uh, today. So it really has been a, a terrible time on the roads, and it's a time that we need to start really thinking carefully as road users about our own driving behaviour. Uh, whilst investigations will continue in relation to the cause of these uh, tragic uh, crashes, um, we do uh, continue to remind people that the fatal four road crash, the reasons for road crash, are still the sorts of things that are being represented far too often in our statistics. So we'd urge people to really think very cautiously about your driving behaviour. There are all things that we can do to ensure the safety of not only ourselves but others on the road. Uh, at the end of the day, what this road toll will look like at the end of 2012 very much comes down to each and every one of us. We need to ensure that we're patient behind the wheel. We certainly need to make sure we're not speeding, not drink driving, not driving whilst tired and always wearing a seatbelt whenever we're in a motor vehicle. I'm happy to take some questions when you're ready. So some of these um, incidents that have talked about in the last 24 hours, a couple of them in particular, there was one at Nunda, there's another one at the Cliff Train up north where someone was trying to get across. The they fall outside the, the fatal four, don't they? It's just behaviour that's hard to explain at all. This is something that we're, that we're seeing. The fatal, the fatal four, of course, is our major, is our major focus because it does represent overwhelmingly the majority of our, our traffic crashes. But I think the important thing to remember is that, that, that road rules really are there for a reason. We are starting to see a number of traffic crashes that have resulted uh, from people simply uh, failing to take or have due regard for, for the road rules. Um, this is a very difficult thing uh, for people to really, for us to explain away. The road rules are there. We expect, as all community people do, as all people sharing the roads will, that people will obey the rules. And of course, on, on roads, disobeying the rules is a potentially uh, fatal uh, thing to do. Is it driving nuts just seeing this sort of thing happen time after time? Look, I think that we really have to start asking the question why the message about road safety isn't getting through to the extent that we'd like. Now, we realise that uh, 2012 has just kicked off, it's just the start of the year, but already we've seen 16 people killed on our roads. Now that represents almost one person a day. At the conclusion of 2012, our road statistics are going to be absolutely appalling, but more importantly, these statistics rep represent loss of life, they represent loss of income, they represent sadness and misery to families, to employers, to friends. The, the ripple effect of so many people being killed on our roads is almost impossible to fathom and calculate. So when we talk about the statistics, it's really important to remember that what we're talking about here is actually people's lives. It's, it's, it's fathers, it's partners, it's sons, it's brothers. And they're all people who've died on our roads here in Queensland. And really we are the ones who have the option about whether this road toll is going to increase or decrease. Everybody that drives a motor car or roads or uses the road in any way, whether it's a pedestrian or a cyclist, everybody has a responsibility to do all they can to try to make that road environment as safe as possible and to reduce what we're seeing as an alarming trend, early though it is, an alarming trend in how our road toll is growing. Andy, can you tell us what happened at Nunda? Is it two 16 year old girls, obviously a licence in a car drove down the wrong way? Well what I can confirm is that there was a serious traffic crash that occurred in Nunda uh, and that serious traffic crash involved a group of people who were travelling in a vehicle. It came into collision with another vehicle. Now, the, the full circumstances of that, including details about the individuals involved, etc., uh, will become clearer when our uh, forensic crash people uh, finish the investigation. So it's very early, to, to, uh, very early time to sort of talk about causation at this stage, and uh, and really in terms of those involved, I'd rather not talk about that just yet. It's still a very uh, fresh incident, and. Uh, it's, it's really not something that we'd like to speculate on at this time. Not to be ignorant, but the five people in the car that seems to be in the right, that were heading in their right lane, you know, heading north, um, do you know where they were from? We heard that they were Korean people. I'm just wondering if they're Korean nationals or if they're Australian citizens or... No, I don't have that information. I'm sorry. And in the morning, you mentioned that high road toll. Often when you see you know, a higher road toll early in the year it's because there's been one particular incident where you might have had multiple fatalities. These all seem to be single incidents. Does that sort of talk to just how many disappointing road events 
there's been? Yes, that's true. Uh, so far this year, we've had single fatality crashes. Um, often we see multiple fatality crashes, as you say, uh, and that's, that's, that's tragic. But when you see single fatality crashes, it means that, that you've got lots more crashes. So effectively, you've got lots more things going wrong out there uh, for people behind the wheel of motor cars. So we, we really, do, um, really do urge people to think very, very carefully about this. Um, one thing that we do know for certain, and that is that fatalities from road crashes, or road crashes themselves, are things that in many cases are unavoidable. Um, this is not the same thing as a person contracting some type of, of disease that claims a life or, or some terrible unforeseen event. Very often, driver behaviour is what leads to crashes, and it's crashes that lead to these deaths. So I, I, I really do need to emphasise that what we're talking about here is the loss of life on Queensland roads. But what we're talking about also is, in many cases, an avoidable loss of life on Queensland roads. This level of misery, this level of sadness that we're seeing now, and is starting to roll into mid to the end of January, this sort of sadness and misery that we're seeing can be avoided in many cases if people simply exercise care and caution, stick to those fatal four, and you know, make sure they pay attention and give due regard to the driving that they're doing. Is it time to maybe expand the fatal four to the fatal five? to include ignorance or stupidity? There's a, you know, there's a few things that are coming up now. I've got to tell you, there's a few things that are coming up now. But, but one, of them, uh, one of the things that we're starting to see is a rise in, the, uh, in traffic accidents, which we, traffic crashes, which we think are as a result of, uh, of um, failing to concentrate, being distracted. Um, so, we, you know, we, we do urge people at, at regular intervals, and I'd, I'd, uh, I'd use this as an opportunity to remind people again that uh, mobile phones and motor cars simply don't mix. Uh, it's a dangerous combination. In addition to that, you've also got iPods and ePads and, uh, and MP3 players and a range of other devices which really are quite portable and therefore quite convenient for people. But unfortunately, some people are tempted to use those things on the road. So we'd urge people to focus on the driving. That's the most important activity in terms of your own personal safety and the personal safety of those around you that most people will ever undertake in their lives. So it is really important that we focus. One sort of things when you said before about maybe it's time to question um, why the message isn't getting through. We have so many ads, billboards, all that sort of stuff. What else can be done? I think that's the big challenge. Um, the Queensland Police Service and our, and our partners uh, in road safety, uh, Department of Transport uh, and Main Roads and other groups uh, really are genuinely seeking uh, worldwide uh, those messages, those programs, those initiatives that, that get traction and that can have results in lowering our, our fatal crashes on the road. And, and we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to look for those ways of reaching all the demographic, the entire demographic out there that drives motor cars. Some of our ad campaigns, obviously, for very good reason, target certain groups, certain age profiles, uh, certain gender. Uh, and that's what we have to keep doing. We have to keep looking for all those messages that will target those specific groups that we see represented in road crashes. And, and I, I think the, the challenge is for everybody involved in this to maintain their, their vigilance, to maintain their focus, to, ma to maintain their energy in looking for and developing up initiatives that we know will work. And certainly the Queensland Police Service are very, very committed to that. The RBCQs pointed to the Bruce Highway as a really dangerous road. Could it be one of the things that are going wrong with the motorists? People have said to me frequently that, you know, road condition Surely that plays a major part in, in road crashes. Um, no doubt, uh, you know, one of one of the many things that we can do is to uh, is to improve engineering around roads, etc. That, that's a, that's a given. We we accept that. But the the most important part is its driver behaviour. Uh, roads uh, will re, will be rebuilt in time. Um, roads will become safer in time. We know that. But what we can do today, uh, well, even when we walk from this room is drive to the conditions of the road. You know, roads deteriorate, roads are not always the same, particularly at this time of year when we get flooding. Uh, road damage occurs, uh, roads become very wet, slippery, uh, vehicles lose traction quickly. Uh, there's, there's any number of, of environmental reasons, including the condition of roads, which people would objectively look at and say, that, that's, that's quite dangerous. But overwhelmingly, the most dangerous thing is for people to ignore road conditions and drive in a way in which, a way which, which complete, completely precludes any likelihood that there could be anything wrong with the road.
January there were 17 deaths for the entire month and 2010 was something similar. Can you remember as bad a start to the year as this in recent times? Uh, t I, I can't, I can't, but having said that, uh, I would have to go back through the statistics and look and make those comparisons. Um, but, but what I can tell you is when you see a figure like this, when you see 16 people killed uh, in 19 days of the year, it's a real concern, it's a real worry. And I, you know, really it's important that we get on top of this now. Um, I think at the start of the year, it's always a great opportunity for people to do a bit of personal stock taking, a bit, a bit of personal thinking. And, and I think people really do need to just stop now and pause with 16 deaths in 19 days and ask themselves the question, what can I do to improve my own driver behaviour? Can I be a little more patient behind the wheel? Can I resolve to, speak, to stick to the speed limits? What are the things that every one of us can actually do to improve their own driver behaviour? Because this type of uh, progress is, is, is a terrible thing to see for 2012. If we were to continue at this sort of rate, where would that have us in terms of previous, you know, we'd be talking back in the dark days of the 70s or 80s if we kept at this rate? Well, I mean, if we're, if we're, if we're talking about, if, that, if, a, if a trend of almost one a day was to continue, there's your answer. You know, we, we're, we're going to look at a, at a total that will well and truly exceed our 2011 and our 2010 totals. Um, you know, we, we, we can never predict these things, it's a very inexact science, but but so far this is not shaping up to be a good year and, and I think we all need to be, to be very careful and vigilant about this because there are now 16 people no longer with us in Queensland that are with us uh, and we're celebrating New Year's Eve with us. Given how you said there's been a terrible time for policing in, in the last 24 hours, how worried are you about Australia Day and the possibility of some people taking that four day trip somewhere? Well that's really important. With this next round of public holidays fast approaching, people really do need to think carefully about their driving behaviour then. Uh, it's particularly true and noticeable that we see uh, people experience more fatigue, greater fatigue when they're taking longer trips, when they're going away on holidays etc. So we really would urge people to take great care, plan their trip out. Now it's, everybody tries to squeeze as much out of their holiday as they can but we would urge people to think carefully about that. Your trip home and your trip there are far more important than any time you might spend away because that's the time at which you're most vulnerable as a road user. So we really would urge people to think ahead, plan their trip and always make sure that they take those breaks every two hours, particularly on those long trips. It's just so important. Uh, fatigue is the sort, of, uh, the sort of factor that can sneak up on any driver irrespective of how experienced they are and of course we know the results are, are, are can, be, can be really quite horrendous.